The theme we have for TEDx Dupree Park is seeding greatness. And it's about wonderful things that are happening that we have with many of the speakers. And right now, you're going to get a chance to experience seeding greatness in a beautiful way through music and how music has done that in such a beautiful way. We're going to be talking with Leonid, who is the founder of Leonid and Friends. And he is a person that really emulates what it means to see greatness. And he is joining us right now from a studio over in Moscow, Russia. And he's accompanied by Roman Le Vorobyev as well. Leonid Vorobyev, we're so glad to have you here with us today. Dobro prizhalovat. Welcome, sir. Hello, Terry. First of it all, is. thank you for inviting us to take part in TEDx. It's a big honor. Well, we are really glad to have you here because what you have done is nothing short of amazing. I mean, as I look at what you've done just before we went on here, I went over and checked out YouTube and your videos where you emulate the wonderful bands like Earth, Wind & Fire, Ides of March, The Beatles, and particularly Chicago. Because those of you watching this, listen to this. As of right now, I looked over there, Saturday in the Park. You remember that Chicago song? 1.7 million views. We look at, does anybody really know what time it is? 3.2 million views so far. One of my favorite songs, 25 or 6 to 4, 4 million views. And coming in at 7.3 million, September by, yep, that's right, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And this band emulates it. So what I want to do, Leonid, is want to uh, talk to you about this, how you got the band started. What gave you the idea to do that? And also, why Chicago is the band? We're glad you did it. And why that all came about. Okay, well, it's, it all started on my 60th birthday, which was already six years ago. I was jogging in the park and uh, recalling people usually saying, oh, when I retire, I will finally do what I love, fishing or gardening or some other hobby. Well, I've been dedicated to music all my life and this is my biggest passion. So I didn't want to change that. But I still wanted to celebrate this mark in a special way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have remembered the song that we used to play in a band when I was young, a track from uh, one of my favorite bands, Chicago, called Brand New Love Affair. But we didn't have a proper brass section at that time. So I thought it would be cool to record it uh, properly now. I called my friends who are all highly skilled professional musicians. And I knew they would not refuse me a favor because I had them many times before. We got together, filmed a simple studio video as we were playing, and I put it up on YouTube with no expectation at all. It was merely a gift to myself. I was even ready that American audience, especially Chicago fans will uh, uh, scorn us like ha, those Russians. Who do they think they are? <laughs> But little that I knew, a few weeks later, it was already on Chicago's official website. And we were getting waves of acknowledgments and lots of positive comments. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a marvelous job with that. And we just love it. Those of us, I grew up listening to Chicago and yeah. just loved what uh, we've done there. But I understand also, I want to go even deeper here on something that's going to be of help to people. You looked at the songs and you not and brought in others who didn't necessarily speak English and you emulated what they do almost perfectly. I mean, it sounds exactly like Chicago I was listening Thank to you. growing up on that. And so how did you reverse engineer that? And how could we use some of those principles in our own lives to reverse engineer good practices? Okay. For that, I have to back to the time uh, when I was growing up in a little town in Siberia behind the Iron Curtain, you know. Back in the 60s and in the beginning of 70s, there was no such thing as electric guitar available in stores in the Soviet Union. You could find it only in some official places. And uh, the only way to get a guitar like that was do it yourself. <laughs> At that point, I found a popular science magazine for teenagers that explained how to make an electric guitar with all drawings and sketches. One important detail was to have an electronic pickup and they suggested to get one from an old telephone handset but I didn't have any old telephones. So I looked around on the streets and I found that all the telephone booths were missing handsets, funny enough, they were cut off. 
And that seemed like the whole town has read that magazine before I did. And, right, and uh, uh, right after school, I entered the Polytechnic College, and not because my parents insisted, but because I knew that there was a full music set at the college available, including the real electric guitars, drums, and some sound equipment like amplifiers and so on. During the whole first year, I tried to reach those instruments, but the senior undergrads didn't let me in. <laughs> so I found unoccupied instruments uh, uh, at the railroad depot outside the town. And the uh, guys who played there before had to go to army and the instruments became available. The guy in charge there asked me, do you have a band? And I confidently said, confidently say, of course, but actually I didn't. <laughs> yeah. He said that I have two months to get ready to perform a real big show. Uh, all I could find at that point was four guys who barely played play any instruments. And I began to make something that resembles a band out of them. During the next two months, every morning, I left home for the university. But actually, I took two transfers by bus to go outside the town to my rehearsal base. And during the day, I was transcribing songs, breaking apart all instrumental parts by ear. In the evening, my guys would come in and I showed each one of them what to play and sing and how to do it. And uh, Step by step, I, I mastered all the instrumental instruments in the band, all voices in, in harmonies. And uh, my guys started sound like a real band. Mm. Well, you can imagine what happened when my mother found out from a professor at the college that I was absent for months. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After all, I did transfer myself from the Polytechnic College to the University of Culture, where I studied to become a choir conductor. And now I realize that every skill that I have learned and developed in my life proved useful when I started to transcribe and produce Chicago music, because I had to take apart every instrument, voice and harmony in order to recreate it as a whole. So I would say, do not throw away any skill that you have learned in any area, because it still has a meaning <laughs> and you never know where it's going to take you. I love that style of adapting and reverse engineering and doing. A lot of us can use that in our lives. All of us can implement it in some form. And I think that's brilliant. Well, on my next question, I want to shift over to you, Roman, because you get a chance to work with this wonderful guy who's your father, but also a band and you touring around the United States, touring around the world. What is it really like being with him? We're going to put, put him offside for just a minute there. And tell us what it's really like being with him on the band. Well, in short, um, I'm a very lucky guy to be a son of a rock star, wow. you know, <laughs> yes. uh, but also because um, he's my best friend and I owed him all the support he gave me, including great taste of music that he instilled in me. So um, when I joined in as the manager, I felt it was my duty to help my father make his, you know, this dream come true. And at the same time, I can uh, hang out with some awesome musicians and listen to my favorite music, right? Yes, well, they, so, they, they really yeah. are awesome <laughs> as we look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. And uh, matter of fact, for those of you watching this, you want to go over to YouTube and type in uh, Leonid. And by the way, the way we spell that is L-E-O-N-I-D, yeah. pronounced Leonid in Russian. And you want to type that in, Leonid and friends. Put that in and get ready to smile because you're going to enjoy it when we go through <laughs> that and do it. And so as we look at it, also, Lenny, I want to come back to you and say, you know, as we look at what's going on, you are looking at retirement. And a lot of people today on our generation, and you are just a couple years ahead of me. So we're both at that age where we're looking at uh, retirement. And some people think, oh, I'm just going to relax and kick back and all that. What are your thoughts on retirement and the idea of seeding greatness at any age in life? Okay. Well, First of all, I've never disconnected from people who over the years kept me busy, demanded something from me, who motivated me and just kept my hands full. Even though they used to be pain in the butt, once you retire, they become your saving grace. And they will keep you from going stale and just slowly fade away, you know. I also try to stay away from people who tell me that I should rest more, that I have earned it 
and should take it easy. In my opinion, work is a game with purpose and leisure is a game without purpose. Second of all, once you retire, you are probably no longer tied up with formal job obligations and other people's viewpoints, so you are free to do things your way. And it's a big freedom to have because you can finally trust yourself with what you feel is right. And now, not listen to anybody else. Now it's your privilege. <laughs> in my case with Leonid and friends, I broke many rules as singing in English in Russia has no prospects. Same with performing the music of Chicago that is not widely known here. And at last going on stage when you are 60 is nonsense. <laughs> But I didn't care about it and focused you know, on producing a product that I will be satisfied with first of all. I love that. And I think that's really Russia. important. Yeah, I think yeah. that's extraordinarily important. I want to build on top of that to uh, get some advice from you. What would you say to a person who's watching this and needs to learn about how to adapt? You've done that. You've adapted. You improvise and you keep changing. What advice would you give to people that are thinking that they would like to do that but haven't done it yet? Okay. I once read a story about uh, an English lady. Her name is Mary Hobson. Well, at the age of... 56, started to learn Russian. Then she, she then traveled and lived in Russia for a while to study and practice it profoundly. Now she is in her 94 and she makes her own translation of famous Russian authors like Alexander Pushkin and Gribayedov. And she won several medals as a best translator. This is a great example of how to prolong your mental activity and clarity of your mind by always developing new skills and never stop learning something new. <laughs> I love it. I think that's really important. Well, as a final question, I'd like to ask you as we look at what you've done, you started a new business at the age of 60 and you've become a worldwide sensation that we listen to. I listen to it regularly, the music you have. It's just marvelous. What would you say to people that are watching this that say, okay, I'd like to do something and how can they be successful? How can they get out at whatever age they might be? What would you say as they're looking into the camera right now, looking at and watching you as you're saying what they can do and how they can become the person that they want to be? Oh, well, first of all, thank you for such acknowledgements. It still seems a bit hard to conceive what we have accomplished. In my experience, everything worthwhile that I have achieved in life, I did so despite all the odds and not by virtue of circumstance. Growing up in behind the Iron Curtain, I couldn't simply buy rock, jazz or pop records in stores. I had to make my own guitar in order to play, overcoming the resistance, resistance from my parents who did not approve of my music career and wanted to see me as an engineer. And just going against the whole community system that didn't let me do what I wanted to do. And it always seems it's never the right time to start something new. And today it's especially true with what is going on around the world. But the moment you give up your purpose, you become half alive. You know, I have buried my own purpose of creating a dream band when I was about 25, because it seemed like life demanded something else more relevant at that time. And the people told me not to keep my head in the clouds. And at some point I bought it, but it turns out that I was wrong. When I reached 60, it was simply a decision to revive that purpose with no expectation attached, as I could finally afford it. But the truth of the matter, I could have afforded it years earlier. So it's never too late to revive your purposes and your passion for something. And I really think it is the best way to revive yourself and live to the fullest. Absolutely. And I also want to say that I am blessed to have friends who are extraordinary musicians and who shared this journey with me. This would not have been possible without them. Yeah. It's not for knock. I called the band Leonid and Friends. <laughs> and our biggest achievement is that all the friends we now have around the globe Yes, Thanks indeed. again for having us here. <laughs> well, we appreciate it and really appreciate what you are doing, both of you. Uh, Leonid and uh, Roman, we appreciate you. Spasiba Bolshoi, thank you very much for what you have done. Yeah, Terry, I would like to just add a couple more words for myself. You know, um, 
probably the most amazing thing I could tell you, of course, how it is an, an incredible adventure to travel and perform and, and so forth and how the shows work. But the connection we have with our fans is phenomenal. It's a friendship and love that we get is overwhelming. You yes. know, it's our extended family now. So we try to give back as much as possible. We try to treat everybody as our personal friend, as a special guest anywhere we go. And we hope to be, you know, um, as kind of like ambassadors of peace, yes. you know, coming from the other side of the planet. And music really serves us as the universal language. I love the way you say that because that's what you're doing. You're uniting the world with zero politics, but it's just people getting together around the world, sharing great music, good times, and being together. Thank you both for what you're doing. And please tell the band we said thank you to them as well. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. And for those of you watching this, think about this. Think about how you can implement that kind of courage, that kind of uh, inspiration to get going and be creative. Work. Yes, things are going to be hard at times. Look what he had to go through. But now look where he has. And it doesn't matter what age you are. That is the message. That is really about seeding greatness. I'm Terry Brock. And thank you for joining us for this.